there's two ways that we could track a person saw YouTube ad and then convert it on our own branded terms. One is that segmentation that I just shared with you, um, where how does my uh, search campaign have three engaged view conversions? If you know that you're going to be running four or five ads next month and you have the videos, build those audiences now. You can't retroactively go back and do this. If there's data you could leverage, like as the client who's your demographic of people that purchase, and they say, oh, it's 90, 10, female, male. Good. Use it as your guide. <clears throat> So all that is we're talking about the uh, video campaign types. I'm of the opinion that the, the, the action campaigns are still very good, but there's a lot of campaigns that we have not tested yet that I think can be worthwhile for companies that have multiple videos. Again, we need to think back to last week's where it says, if you're going to run this, make sure your client knows how YouTube actually works, and it's not a click attributed network. We do have some view uh, engagement um, that we can identify versus the click engagement. That is the thing now in Google, so we have that as a backup. Norbeam, uh, I don't know what's going on with them lately, but they are just unreliable. So let's work with what's reliable. We know that we can see click versus views, and we know that targeting a good audience with a good ad is going to help. So don't make it 80% of your spend and make the client upset. But we should include this. And the reason why we should include this is because we can track it on even through multi-channel attribution. Um, this might actually have uh, this included. Let me just see if I can share this with you all. Um, it's not in here. It is in this campaign. Here's something that I think is really interesting. There's two ways that we can track partially. There's two ways that we could track a person saw YouTube ad and then convert it on our own branded terms. One is that segmentation that I just shared with you, um, where how does my uh, search campaign have three engaged view conversions? There's there's no video in here. So how does this happen? How do we have a person that had three three views of a video that's not in this campaign? This is the I'm using first click attribution. So because they saw a YouTube ad here and then Google the brand name, which my brand name is captured in search, we didn't want a brand campaign. We just stuck it in there because it wasn't a big spend. But because we had a person that watched YouTube and then uh, search, this is still click attributed conversions here, but they're just telling you how they're click attributed conversions because I'm capturing and engaged you as a click through conversion. I set that up. I said, yes, if it's 30 days counted as a click conversion. So that's how that is, is being kind of identified here. But if we're seeing our brand campaign, for example, having engaged you conversions and you're running YouTube, perfect. People are watching a video longer than 10 seconds, go in the brand and coming back to that way. So we do have some, some validity there. We can point to that and say, here's not everything, but this is the trend. The other part that we can see is if we go into the audience manager of a YouTube, uh, sorry, of, a, of an account, you have to make sure that that YouTube account of that client is linked to Google ads has to be linked. So any questions about how to link a YouTube account? Does anybody have any questions at all? It's not a stupid question. I just want to make sure that I don't skip over something that no one has experienced before. So please raise your hand. I will, I'll show it very quickly. Not an issue. But does anybody have any questions about how to link a YouTube account to Google Ads? John, I think let's just, I think we should show okay. it anyways. OK, so go into tools and settings, go into linked accounts here. and. You'll scroll to the one that says YouTube here. And we have to link the YouTube account right to Google Ads. They don't have access to their own YouTube account, so I'm just pulling it in for them anyway. But when you link the YouTube account, I did it in this one here so that we can see how to, how to do this. You have to add the channel, then you have to post the channel URL in here. So going into the YouTube channel on, on this client here, this. Paste the YouTube channel in here. It'll say, here's this person. Someone else owns a channel. What we don't have right now is what was the email address of the person that owns that channel, uh, that they are the channel owner, and that they can approve your request. So this is something you'll have to have from the client first, is what is the email address of the channel owner? We're all delegated users in this channel. Well, I'm not, but they are. But they don't have the original owner of the channel in order to approve us. 
it's okay. I'm still running YouTube ads. You can run YouTube ads. The only two things you don't get is custom audiences of YouTube ads uh, or the uh, individual metrics of like people that watched more than one ad on your, or sorry, more than one video after engaging in an ad. So it's called earned views and then earned subscribers. Those are the, like the things that you're not going to get. It's not, shouldn't stop you from running YouTube ads, but that's just something that we'll need to have a step one of go in and make sure that you can actually link the YouTube ads channel to your Google ads account. Then uh, let me switch back to a different client account that has this here. It's really slow everyone, sorry. my YouTube link up here. And then here's what we're going to do. Go into tools and settings, go into audience manager. Inside of audience manager, you're going to create a new audience. Your new audience is going to be YouTube users. Inside of the audience of YouTube users, you're going to make a few different audiences. Make sure you're starting from as wide as you possibly can down to what you're planning to do. And I'll share with you what that means. So the first thing is going to just say all So all YouTube viewers is, well, what's the YouTube channel? So we select the client's YouTube channel and include the people that have taken the following action. Viewed any video in the last, and I think we can go up to 540 days. Yeah, you view anybody, anybody that's ever seen any video from this channel in the last year and a half. Perfect, very, very wide reaching. That's step one. Then go down the funnel, the viewed certain videos, whether they are ads or not viewed any video only as an ad or uh, sorry viewed any video as an ad or viewed certain videos as an ad so this is something that's important if i'm running a target frequency on that one video i want to know do the people that watch that two or three times google my brand name and i'm going I'm to build that audience so this these are the people that i'm going to be building so that's how you use this when i say in the future if you know that you're going to be running four or five ads next month and you have the videos build those audiences now you can't retroactively go back and do this um, not, not very effectively anyway. I found that there is still a match, uh, match rate here that is like 60 to 70% accurate. So this isn't a perfect indicator of success. Build it first though. So you can say view a certain video as an ad, uh, and then paste in your video here. So I know that anybody, oops, I know that anybody that has watched this video as an ad in the last four or 540 days, I want to build this first run as this way it starts to track day one by watching it. You can pre-fill the segments in the last 30 days. We're already doing that here. Uh, or you can start with an empty segment. But if it's something you're doing in the future, just start with an empty segment. If you have people that are viewing any video as, you know, in the past 540 days, uh, you can only pre-fill it in the last 30 days. That's why I'm saying you can't really retroactively go back and do this with an ad. you got to build it first. Because if you're running it for two months, you got 30 days missing. <clears throat> Description, this is for you. Name it whatever you'd like. But go through and build all of these build all these viewer segments. Because then when you hop into your brand campaign later on and you go into the audiences, you can have uh, an observe audience that's added in here. I don't think I've done this yet. 14 can be shown, to, oh, maybe not. Customer list. Yeah, no, I, they had a policy issue from the previous user. Long story short, this account got got penalized pretty hard for a previous violation because of the they were uploading people who bought COVID masks and they got they got messed up. So I might not be able to do it this account here. Uh, anyway, if you upload, just as an example, if you upload an audience here of people that have viewed your your YouTube ads. Um, that says, okay, it's an observation. The past 30 days of people who watched a YouTube ad, for example, there's four conversions in there. What does that tell you? It tells you four people watched that ad and then Google searched your brand name. Great. Why this is important is because if you're running a brand campaign at the same time running YouTube, you can start to sort of identify these users and prove it to your client alongside of the fact that we should see an overall increase in their actual revenue. This is not a glitch. 
I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you want to work with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google Ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's S-O-L-8.com, to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm them so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now, back to your regularly scheduled program. Uh, Glenn, what's up? Just to go back on what you were talking about when you were saying building out the audiences for YouTube, um, when we, if we've got a target frequency campaign set up, and let's say we've got five videos inside that campaign, would we set up an individual audience for every single video viewed as an ad and put that in observation? So there might be five videos in observation inside the brand campaign. You can if you wanted to, yeah. Um, now just know that what I'm gonna discuss here would could possibly change that. Oh. Um, yep, so you're, you're on the, exactly on the right track. And I love that you and my brain work exactly the same because I said, oh, I said that I got to show them this. <laughs> and then you're like, wait, you said that you need to show me this. So that that's actually, it's cool where you'll see what I mean next. And when I was saying there's a new type of campaign that I think we should test for people that have good amount of YouTube ads that we, we need to have that top of funnel be driven, whether that's true view for action or not. Um, that's, that's has to be taken out of the equation right now because this new camp, this other campaign type that I think we should all start testing, you cannot use true boot fraction. It's only a target CPM model, if I, my, my memory serves me right. But when you see it, it'll make a lot more sense to say, you know what, if we have a really good audience, and what I'm talking about is the interest based audience, also get into demographics, male and unknowns, or female and unknowns. Just by the way, just know you're always going to have to do the unknowns and then. Later on, if the unknowns categories don't perform, then take them out. But unknown right now is more than 60% or 60% of all of YouTube's known demographics. We have a chat. I just want to see. Yeah, that was me not just DSK. mentioning oh. not DSK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the YouTube, or sorry, the, the Google's known audiences in markets, affinities, life events, et cetera. So not custom and not yours and not keywords. It's Google's audiences. The difference between, when I say Google's audience, it means without you telling it what you want, it presented what it had or has or haves. I don't know how I, I don't English good, but the, what it says that it has. So we know that we have this in market, this affinity and this in, in uh, life event audiences. And I'm not choosing the DSK keywords. I'm not making a custom audience of people who have Google this keyword and blah, blah, blah. It's only what Google has. Um, so if you have good uh, uh, audiences that are, you know, relative enough that you were spending a penny on, then include them. The demographics include your unknowns as a default, but then build out who you would want. Actually, let's do that now. Let's, let's just do that now before we, we dive into this one. Let me just grab a video campaign. And this target frequency here, for example, I'll share with you what I mean. Uh, if we look at the audiences inside the demographics, <clears throat> I'm excluding 55 to 65. This is a curly hair product. I'm probably not going to get too much sales on 55 to 65 from YouTube shorts from this age group. That's my hunch. I put some unknowns in there though as well. And 18 to 24, I got more clicks. And 25, 35, 45, 54. I'm going to wait. I don't know if this audience is going to be engaged. My unknowns, I didn't include them, but it is one. Now let's look at the impressions though. Or actually, look, let's look at the views. Views are much higher for the audience that I expect them to be. These are TikTok users. That's how I'm building my avatar. These are primarily TikTok-esque age group users. 18 and 24, perfect. But I'm including people that still want to be TikTok users. <laughs> Let's just solve that. <clears throat> uh, gender, I'm doing female and unknown. You know, I'm just, again, I don't want to make this about uh, uh, a gender discussion, but made sense for, for what I'm trying to achieve. So I'm excluding males and I'm using females. And that's obviously, I do have a couple of views in, in the unknowns. My unknown cost per milli is the same as my female. It's actually a little higher. Good, good. Um, I don't know how I got males in there. They have been excluded. That's cool. <laughs> okay, you and I built this on with each other. 
how do you think that happened? I mean, I wonder if it's a group of the unknowns that maybe got categorized as males. <laughs> I don't Probably. know. Probably. I don't know either. <laughs> but it was unknown that they found out later. Like, yeah. Oh, by the way. <laughs> uh, cool. So uh, household income. Uh, these are $20 items. I don't care what you make. Perfect. Makes sense. Lower 50 is getting the most amount of clicks. I'm glad I didn't try to just put it toward like the top 10% or the top 20%. That's not where my my massive amount of engagement is coming from. You think about these are people that are trying to curl their hair themselves. What does that mean? They may not be in a position financially to decide that it is best for them to go have it done by someone else and pay for it. So let's just call it, let's just leave it at that. That was my my demographic for my, my household income. And parental status, um, I we did I just left it all open. There's not even data on that. I don't really care if you're a pair or not if you have curly hair. Good. That's not a deciding factor for different purposes or not. So that's what I'm saying by demographic. Leave the unknowns, but target the people that you want. If it's applicable to a specific gender. Uh, not to make this creepy or odd, but lingerie, for example, even men's hair care products like receding hair is actually purchased by equal genders as frequently as each other. So men buy women, and I'm just using the genders that we can see inside of Google, men do buy women lingerie as a gift. It happens a lot. The company, uh, sorry about this, everyone. The company that we had, um, that was a male wash company. Yeah, okay, <laughs> on car. <laughs> what? Shocked. So the company, our primary demographic of purchasers were women. That is who was, and they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars a month on, on advertisements. It was about 65% female, 35% male. Valentine's Day was bigger than their Christmas. The women would order this gift set for the male partners more often than the males would purchase it for themselves. So don't assume that because a product is made for a specific gender that the other gender wouldn't buy it for the other gender. Just leave it at that. Let's just make sure that that's something we test rather than assume. This I'm assuming because this is a very, 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 I mean, we're talking like 91% to nine female versus male buyers. If I'm testing something, I'm gonna go with what the data already shows and not assume. If there's data you could leverage, like ask the client, who's your demographic of people that purchase? And they say, oh, it's 90, 10, female, male. Good, use it as your guide. <clears throat> so all that is to be said, but always include your unknowns because those are also half of your people. Make sense? Cool. I got on the phone yesterday with Google for this client and I said, hey, there's a new beta out and I know about the new beta because I've been seeing chatter about it online. There's a new beta out that you can get your ads in YouTube shorts. I need access to that beta. And they said, well, it's not necessarily a beta 